everyone. Welcome back to Heart to Heart Astrology Podcast. We are granddaughter and grandmother joined together to share our heart to heart perspective on the coming astrology and the energy going on in our lives. I'm Adriana. I'm based in the UK. To give you a little brief background, I've been an intuitive tarot reader for uh, over four years now. And I'm also now a galactic astrologer and a past life reader. I'm Caitlin and been involved in uh, metaphysics, uh, I'd say most of my life, long, long time. And I'm a Reiki master and I also teach astrology. Uh, I like to teach basic astrology and actually I'm going to do a star seed astrology workshop uh, for the very first time and I right now I do it in person but I do want to look at making it available maybe in the fall of this year so we will keep you posted mm. so um, if you do enjoy what we share today please do remember to like this video comment down below if anything resonates or if you want to add in anything that we talk about this video, we're going to kind of take it a little bit more laid back from our usual videos. So we are going to talk about the full moon coming up, but we are also going to have some open conversation as we are seeing a lot of divine feminine themes surrounding the full moon with its conjunction to uh, the star Alphard and as well as some Lyra alignments that uh, Caitlin is going to share also sharing I'm going to share some mythology so we're going to have that kind of going on and just listen in grab a cup of tea or coffee and enjoy this video with us so this full moon is in Aquarius and it's happening August 19th it is at 1825 UK time. So that would be 125 Eastern time for the United States. This full moon is making an opposition. So the sun is conjunct Alphard, with that full moon going across there. So I'll show you the chart actually of that. It's making this alignment to Alphard, which is part of the constellation of Hydra here. And <laughs> I had to show this. <laughs> I love this beautiful painting that was done by Tilly Campbell Allen. I did have to censor it with a cute little snake, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I love it. For it's YouTube's adorable. sake. <laughs> so please excuse that, but it is a very beautiful piece of artwork that I wanted to include. Um, that she made actually of uh, these serpent beings, this particular one being the Naga Kanya, which I will speak about soon. Love the colors. I love the gold leaf. Yeah. So here is the astrology chart. There we see this alignment going on here. It is uh, next to the vertex as well. So a faded energy going on there you can see this alignment happening. So what is this challenging here? What is this bringing about? So let's talk about more. What does the energy of fixed star Alphard bring? It brings a very artistic energy and passionate one. It's known as the heart of the snake or in some translations, the solitary one. It's of the nature of Saturn, Neptune and Venus. This also can pretend, pertain to uh, poisons, especially in more ancient times, the ancient people where poisons were more common. Um, but I feel in more modern day, it kind of has to do with what are poisons or toxicities in relationships and things of that nature. But there could be even uh, you know, snake bites to look out for, insect bites and overindulgence what are you consuming snake bites egypt yes yes mm -hmm. curses. curses with snake bites in egypt huge yeah. mm. also transformations as serpents are often represented as uh, beings that represent transformations through many many mythologies and many cultures and mm -hmm. also revered with power with alfard this also brings on the kundalini energy, 
and divine feminine coming through. We're mm-hmm. seeing also the dark and light side of the feminine with this alignment. So there's both a dark nature and light nature to the feminine. So I do want to talk about the mythological connections. I love sharing mythology. We both love sharing mythology here where we see it and where it fits well with this, uh, with these galactic alignments that we see here. So the Hydra constellation is again represented as the water serpent. It is associated with Hindu spirits called the Nagas. Uh, That is the masculine or the male um, Nagas or Nagini, the female. Initially mentioned in Buddhist texts, the goddess Naga Kanya is half woman, half serpent, with bird-like wings, as we saw in that beautiful painting. Mm -hmm. She is a benevolent goddess of the three realms. She is sometimes connected to the Hindu goddess Lakshmi, Mm -hmm. but on the more darker aspect, the darker feminine aspect, maybe Kali. So on one end, you have Lakshmi, the more light feminine, uh, kind of similar to Venus. If you are familiar Mm -hmm. with Venus and Aphrodite, that light feminine energy. And then on the other end, you have the more dark feminine Kali coming in um, to stand up and take control of the situation. Mm -hmm. Like Eris, like Eris. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Don't, yeah, don't get on her bad side. The Naga Kanya is the protector of great wisdom and Dharma. And she was seen also as a guardian of waters and the environment. So you wouldn't want, what I was researching is, you know, there were certain sacred waters. You wouldn't want to pollute those waters as it was a bad omen uh, to do that. Mm-hmm. But they were uh, very uh, respectful of the waters and the environment. Mm-hmm. Also, this connects to the Kundalini activation too. Uh, which in which is very predominantly in Indian culture, um, as we can see through uh, yoga practices when uh, done correctly, of course, with Kundalini activations. So she also embodies, uh, like I said, both the light and dark feminine, bringing in life and wisdom in, but fiercely protective to any wrongdoers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I really like her. <laughs> I love it. (laughs) Through many myths, we see the serpent representing transformation, as we do with this fixed star Alfard in the Hydra constellation. So this alignment with the full moon, it brings in transformations and changes in our personal lives. For some, it may be with relationships, as we talked about even earlier this month of August, with Venus conjunct Mercury starting off the month, you may have already started to have those transformations happen. The full moon is a time to reveal things. That's what the full moon does. It sheds a light on things to be revealed, taking the blindfold off and releasing it. Release what you no longer need with the full moon, letting go of what no longer serves us. Hmm. So some questions for you to think about. Where do you find poison in your life? Do you have toxic relationships of any kind? that need to be released. Honor the divine feminine wisdom within yourself in doing so with this energy. This can also be a great time to get in touch with your feminine energy. Um, I was feeling that sense of dancing in the moonlight (laughs) or just dancing in your home. Do something creative or connect to water, whether uh, you have a relaxing bath or going um, near a body of water, feeling the waves of the ocean cleanse you, especially if it is the ocean, because that salt just naturally cleanses you um, when you immerse yourself in it. If you can get to an ocean (laughs) where you're at, or just taking that relaxing bath. And um, I used, what is that called? The Epsom salt in my bath with lavender. And just doing that. And I even put vitamin C in my water. I go all the way. So (laughs) I'm getting that not so... um, contaminated with the um you know fluoride and all that other stuff in it so you kind of want to cleanse your water before you cleanse yourself if that makes sense absolutely but that was what i wanted to share about that 
um, okay. with what we have going on with the full moon. I, I'd like to talk a little bit about just the Hydra star seed energy. So yes. um, kind of expanding mm -hmm. out even beyond Alfard, but just the generalization of the fact that it's the largest constellation in the Southern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, the, the darker yin feminine energy is the quality that comes through. And, but the mission is to bring the dark feminine energy to balance with the masculine. So I feel that's really important to look at. It's not for the feminine energy to override or overpower. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We've gone through, uh, you know, if we go way back in, in our history, we've gone through matriarchal times. We are about to, we are in the process of bursting free from patriarchal times, but not to go back into matriarchal, but to go back into a balance of yin and yang. This is huge. The dark feminine scares a lot of people. Um, this is this shows up quite a bit uh, right now. Politically, it's showing up in the U.S. Uh, it, it's very fearful to a lot of people. Um, but it is something that needs to happen to balance how we have been so out of balance for so long. Um, it's a very shamanic and shape-shifting energy, especially as Adriana brought up with Kundalini. Um, I happen to be a Kriya Yogini, so I'm very familiar with Kundalini energy. Uh, have been this since um, 1988, a long, long time of practicing uh, Kriya and Kundalini kind of going a little bit different direction, uh, guided to do so. Mary Magdalene, I feel it gets a bad rap. <laughs> it's like, so I have a, a little bit of a different take on Mary Magdalene than uh, maybe most people do. Um, a lot of it is based on personal guidance that I've received, but also through the channelings of Edgar Casey, And was at a program many, many years ago that brought in a different way to look at Mary Magdalene. And, and this really just rang true to me, um, that she was from a wealthy family, was not uh, impoverished or uh, she's always shown as a prostitute, uh, but rather the opposite from a wealthy family that to me, Jesus in his heyday uh, was very much kind of running a revolution at that time. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but he was against what the norm was. He was revolting, okay, and had a whole group with him, and she was a part of it. And I really feel that she financed his revolution, so to speak, so that they could do what they needed to do. And um, so that is a little bit part of my belief system. So very different from classic, but um, that could be looked at as a dark feminine way. Um, but to me, very different than the way that she's portrayed as uh, impoverished or as a prostitute. I don't sense that at all with Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. There are those that believe that she and Jesus married, that they ended up in France. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole, oh, through Edgar Casey, a whole different way of looking at it, had a family. Um, so it's, it's all how you look at it. Um, perspective is everything. If I could ask, this, do you think that she was portrayed, um, in a lower light, uh, as a prostitute, for example, uh, by the church to probably diminish the, the feminine the, and women in general at that time, yeah. of course. It was, uh, I, I, years ago, great question, Adri. Great. Years ago, I got this book called The Complete Jesus Gospel. So it had mm -hmm. every gospel. It has Mary Magdalene's gospel, St. Thomas's gospel. It also showed where uh, the churches had gone in and took out some of the writings that showed how they were literally X'd out mm -hmm. sections of the Bible. Um, it's interesting if you really are truly a, a, a open-minded theologian, it would be interesting to go into that and really check it out for yourself because you're going to find that 
uh, the fact that where's the 20 years where J Jesus was learning? Right. <laughs> it's like if you, you know, it's like you, you study other uh, modalities and, and it's talking about how he was in Egypt, how he was uh, with uh, the Hindu uh, gurus and finding different mm. ways. I mean, to even the fact that he had the 12 apostles was like having his own ashram. So, I mean, it's like, it's all, again, how you look at it. Mm -hmm. There's many different, like if you take the Last Supper, people have analyzed the pictures and where Mary Magdalene is placed and, and how in that picture, the male, uh, there was like a descending, if you if dissenting look on their faces where she was placed so close to Jesus in that. So fascinating things to really study and expand on, but I'm getting way off topic as usual. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I, have to watch. I wanted to bring it on back to uh, Hydra and just mention that a lot of times um, there will be a Corvus connection a Corvus starseed connection to anybody that has Hydra. And we were talking about with our own Hydra connections, mm -hmm. both have Corvus, a uh, very small amount, one or two. For the, I only have one, you have two, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yours are very well placed uh, to have it be strong in your chart. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So Corvus uh, are interdimensional telepathic travelers. So the one thing with Corvus is watching that um, we may have a little bit of a challenge with um, healthy boundaries because we get so much telepathic information up ahead that we could kind of poach a little bit of boundaries with others that are just not ready for that. Mm. Um, and we talked about that a little bit with in childhood. I would have a girlfriend that I would meet and we would get along really well. And then a third person would come along and I liked to have more depth in a relationship and talk about important things, even as a young child, um, mm -hmm. very young. And then it would be like, they could not handle that. So boom, you know, any poaching of healthy boundaries creates an uncomfortable energy. And so I, I've learned, and, and really it's been a lot of years now to really watch who I talk with um, to kind of have a way to figure that out, to have some sort of a sign come that, yes, this is a person that you can get deep with. And this is a person that you want to honor that they can't talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's they don't want to get that personal or they don't want to uh, get into deep philosophical yeah. discussions. <laughs> so, so, you know, you, you learn and, um, and I live it that way now. You know, what's interesting is as time has gone on, there's so many more people that do got, like to get deep. I mean, we have a whole group with our uh, quantum soul guidance practitioners. Um, so that's wonderful yeah. to see that change. Go ahead. Yeah. And Corvus to me is all about going deep because to me, it's the underworld psychic abilities like you had mentioned too. So definitely bring on those traits of wanting to have deep conversations or um, but you have to kind of yeah test the waters and see you know mm -hmm. who you can share those conversations with it, I think it was kind of like we bring in the goddesses some more Persephone um, yes. when she was above ground very innocent very light not unlike the Electra star seeds mm -hmm. I think we can see a correlation yes. there and then brought down into the underworld uh, through Hades, through Pluto, and um, and then it matured and learned so much through that experience. That's um, another example too of the light feminine and the dark feminine, because yes, Persephone, yes. even in her own name, um, it embodies the dark feminine, but she still has the light aspect to herself too. And she's also one of my favorite goddesses too. Yeah, we talked earlier about a few other goddesses. Uh, I feel Durga um, is amazing goddess with uh, a great balance of the light and the dark, uh, very balanced. Kuan Yin could be part of this conversation. Um, and even Tara. I mean, there's many versions of Tara, um, but I think Tara could be also involved with this balance. These goddesses are wonderful teachers. Um, and, and the goal is at times we do need 
like a very dark Kali. If uh, somebody is going to harm our family or somebody we love, Kali is going to yeah. come up. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't need Lakshmi to come up in that moment. Mm -hmm. if, if, if somebody is really needing us yeah. to back them up. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is under that umbrella of this Hydra slash Corvus energies that are going to be happening in August. I mean, here we are, and especially towards that the 19th. But we'll probably be moving and shifting and changing as we get in towards the end of August. But I think that's going to be an intense period of time. Hi, Albus. Albus is joining <laughs> in. <laughs> He's playing with my outfit today. Lyra has is coming up too during the full moon. But also uh, Lyra, it was in the new moon as well. And this is showing up in Pluto. Mm -hmm. And again, Pluto it moves so slow. I mean, it's so incredibly yeah. slow across the month. Um, and it, it's the Aladfar is the uh, fixed star in the Lyra constellation. And of course, this full moon in Aquarius with the full moon in Pluto. So we have a very tight conjunction, 0 0.09, according to my area mm -hmm. in Ohio. Lyra brings up a lot of conversation. Okay, there were incredible wars that happened um, with Draco. And they were horrific wars. Um, and it's left scars on many of our souls. Um, if if you read The Prism of Lyra by uh, Lissa Royal Holt, we all go back to there at some point. <laughs> it's where we originated. So everybody has a connection there on some level. So we could still be dealing in a, with our soul patterns with those scars. Um, and one of the hugest big scars biggest scar of all was the great exodus is how they refer to it where everybody had to leave because there that was blown up the stars and the home planets were blown up uh through the draco wars and lyran wars so many went to interesting uh constellations and star connections like centaurus eridanus sirius Procyon, Orion, Aldebaran, Hyades, Pleiades, Andromeda, and, and Cetus. So these are just a few. Um, and you may see these in your chart. If you go on our galactic um, calculator, our galactic astrology calculator, which is free, uh, you could see, do you have any of these correlations? Um, and then, of course, like I said, Adrienne and I can help to uh, interpret and help you guide you to like which ones are most important what do, mm -hmm. what help could help you to even look at it because there's so many connections i'm leading to the patterns that seem to have been bumped up um in people's souls uh due to these wars is victim and poverty consciousness those are the two and and it's uh time we're coming into a time uh when I really truly believe that the Lyrans are watching and are around, especially this month with the uh, Lionsgate portal that's happening. Uh, there's the connection to Avalon and Glastonbury to Stonehenge, these regions in England where you're at. Interesting, you're going to be traveling there. That's going to be exciting for you. And um, so this Lyran energy is uh, kind of help us, I don't know what's the word I want to liberate to be liberated on this level that we've never maybe felt before uh my guidance keeps coming in and saying that around that time of that month around the 19th of august a lot of things are going to start showing up that we maybe never could have imagined showing up um so we shall see time will play out will that happen i don't know but i'm getting a lot of guidance around that and that the lyrans are kind of standing by and are going to be mm. helpful so there's many positive uh, star people hanging out with us right now. I just would love people to know that. Um, a lot of people focus on the negative. Uh, I sense and feel many more ones that are positive and that want us to succeed because above, love has already won. It's the, the wars above are not present. We are still working them out here in the lower frequencies, but above there is, I really believe, peace.
Mm-hmm. And how long will it take to play out here? This is the question. Um, thousands of years, possibly. You know, we just don't know. But I feel we are heading towards a turning point. I mean, who knows what's going on behind the scenes with things. Uh, I do feel that there is support that's there. They're probably uh, intervening when it's needed or when they can. A lot of things that, you know, we norm- we just don't know about what that's going on. So I did pull a card and this was uh, actually during our first video. <laughs> I just was starting to write little notes about what we were going to talk about with this one and uh, just grabbed my deck by Lissa Royal Holt, uh, the Galactic Heritage cards, and there's 108 cards. So I just have uh, this stack right here. This was the stack (laughs) that I pulled out one time just, and it was Courageousness and Lyra. The biggest part of the traits with Lyra is courage. And, um, but it's like, is, is it a brash and foolhardy courage? Or is it a courage, uh, as I would liken to the serenity prayer, the courage to change what we can, to have that wisdom and that awareness, and to know when to bring the courage about and when to be humble or to be have humility. It's this back and forth. Um, and I see that with the Lyran energies. These are the the cats, the big cats, and the uh, winged lions. Are also, mm-hmm. I sense that energy with them of the ability to be leaders, but with compassion. Leaders that will give their own lives before they would take another's life. Um, the true heroes in that respect. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, can't say that all the time with all the dragon energies. Um, there was a definitely a revolution with one dragon that went rogue, and that really led to, I believe, these wars. And uh, so are we going to finally finish up that story? Will some of these storylines finally finish so we can start something truly new? Um, and it's almost like we have to completely let go of all of it for that to happen. And that means the good, the beautiful, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, all of it to have something truly new. And it doesn't mean we have to all blow up. I don't believe that. Been there, done that. That's an old storyline. No, it's going to be somehow while we are still incarnate. So interesting ride this time around. It's exciting, actually. (laughs) So just to kind of drive our point to with what we're seeing with all these feminine energies, we really want to highlight that the feminine is coming in to not overtake the masculine, but to bring balance here with both of these energies. Because we've seen that throughout history with the masculine overtaking more of the feminine. And sometimes that works, but sometimes generally it does not. Uh, what we're highlighting and seeing through this astrology with Alfard and these alignments is the feminine being balanced out here with the masculine by her side. So uh, thank you all for tuning in to watch this video. If you stuck around this far, please do like this and be sure to subscribe to our channels. I'm Starry Sky Readings. Caitlin, and do you want to share? Lactic Healing. Uh, They will be in the description below, uh, depending where you're watching this video from. We might be on the Galactic Astrology channel as well. And you can check the description for our emails on how to contact either of us. Thank you all for being here and hanging with Mercury Retrograde. We're almost through it. We will see you in the next video. Namaste.